same crew, same concept. We're definitely uh, sticking with the podcast format, but um, we're going to be talking hair the whole time and we're going to be doing a haircut as well. So we really want to bring the education back every week and make sure we're guaranteeing at least a full length education class weekly for you guys. So Brian Hare's here. Yo. Drea Bolin. Hey, hey. Justin Scott. Hold on. They're all chatting live. So those of you guys that have tuned in live, thank you so much. Use the chat box there. You can ask questions. Uh, if you're not watching this live and you're watching it later on, then all you have to do is log on every Wednesday night and you can chat with us and join the live classroom. Um, so today, the focus is gonna be haircutting. Um, we put out, this is a, a one length texture bob. We're gonna work on this as the haircut for the day. Um, I wanted to really create a solid shape with the haircut, but uh, so we're gonna do a really technical one length and then go through, I'm gonna show you how to cut the fringe and then she can wear it messier. So we used a beachy kind of texture spray within the haircut just to finish it. So this is something that honestly any guest could wear and not do a lot of effort to make it look like a fun haircut. So that was really my goal with this is to make it salon friendly and so that your guests out there can uh, get the haircut and they don't have to spend a lot of time styling it, finishing it. If they want to, they can blow it out, smooth it out and get uh, see that nice clean line within the haircut. So we're gonna get started. I wanna break down the sectioning. Um, you guys, let me know if there's any questions. And also, if you want to answer any questions, please jump on. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to spin the wheel. Well, Drea is going to spin the wheel. We've already confirmed that she still has that uh, gig. She so we're going to pick. Power. Still my job. Yes. So we're going to pick somebody live uh, while you guys are watching to spin the wheel for. So we have a bunch of cool prizes to give away up there. All right. So the sectioning is very simple. We're, ba we're basically taking four uh, very basic sections or panels from the head. So I'm combing this directly out into my hand just like I would put it in a ponytail, twisting it up, putting it out of the way so that it doesn't uh, get tangled up or uh, kind of confused within the rest of the haircut. So I really want to separate the front and the back of the head there. The next thing I'm going to do is this was parted directly down center back. So let me loosen this up a bit. Turn them in. I'll turn this to the ad so you can show. So we split it down center back. Nice vertical parting. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just below the occipital bone, exact, uh, directly horizontal across the back of the head and I'll comb that over and we're gonna clip it out of the way. So with this part, when I'm working in the back, talked about this before, but I don't like to twist it up and section it away. It just saves a lot of time if I comb everything directly over, nice and tight, and then I slide a clip up underneath. It makes it easy when I go to my next section, I just take the clip down and slide over. So we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. Combing the hair over, away from me. There we go. Slide the clip underneath. Now, what I want to do is, when I'm focused and I'm working on a mannequin head, and I definitely am not rushing in the salon, I want to make sure that I'm doing everything correctly. So I want to make sure my body position is correct. Uh, and everything else. So I'm gonna raise this mannequin head up about chest level, and I wanna work with my eyes straight in front of it. And we're gonna be working to cut one length, so I don't want to uh, have any elevation, so I'm not gonna go in with my fingers underneath the hair whatsoever and to make my first cut. I'm tilting the head slightly forward, and I'm going in. Now, the scissor I'm choosing for this particular technique I want to go more precision, so I'm using my beak scissor uh, from Mizutani. I love this scissor because it's razor sharp, first off. It has a really skinny blade. So if you think about uh, other scissors that you might use, this is more of a standard scissor. The blade is a lot fatter, so when you go underneath the hair, it actually will lift the hair a slight bit. So if you're working with a finer texture of hair and, a, and a, uh, taking small sections out of the head, 
then you can use a scissor like the beak and go in there and, and cut your section and you don't have to lift the hair whatsoever. So we're going to go in and I'll turn that so you can see that. We're good at the mall, I guess. We are? Yeah. Christine is all over this. <laughs> so combing the hair down and I'm just going in with the beak scissor and across. Oh. Now if you were doing this on a guest, Let's yeah. say, would you prefer to sit down to be doing this since the chair might not bring it up as high? Yeah. If I can't get it chest level, then I definitely sit down. Um, I like using the stool to cut hair really for a comfort thing. You know, you definitely, I used to laugh at people that use the stool because I thought it was silly. But then when I, when I actually sat on a nice stool and uh, had my eye level the right way, then you don't have any issues. So. Uh, you know, when you're working with the mannequin stand, you definitely want to be comfortable. So get that hair up right where you want it. Now, to work on the rest of the hair, I want to lift it slightly with my scissor, and then I'm going to pull it back a bit. Not too much. I just don't want to lose that length around the corner. So we're going to scoop it up with my scissor, place it in the comb uh, with no elevation still, and work my way across and cut the hair. So what you're going to see is it is going to slightly dip forward. That's good. I want a little bit of weight in the corner, and that's where we're going to take it from there to the jawbone, or along the jawbone area. So now, as we're working on the opposite side, the big thing is you just want to be pushing the hair in the same direction uh, at all times. So if I'm cutting the hair this way, I'm working and shifting the weight that way. If I'm cutting the hair this way, I'm working and shifting my weight that way. A lot of hairdressers, when they get a hole, in the corner of the haircut, it's because they go in here, and even if they scoop the hair up into the comb and they go in and cut, as soon as you make that first cut, the blade pushes the hair back a bit and it completely throws off where you were pushing the weight and creating that you know, weight distribution in the haircut. So just be very careful that you're always cutting with your blade in the same direction on both sides. So we'll scoop up the hair, and I'm just gonna work backhand just with the tip of the blade. What part? <laughs> what? What part of the blade? The tip. Just the tip? Just, Just the, the tip. tip. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So you can see how it, it does lean forward a little bit. That's where we're working with the weight. And now I'm going to let down my next section. And again, guys, we'll fine tune that line underneath. That's all in the dry cut. So we don't have to worry too much. You could go through in the wet cut, but I feel like you're doing, um, you're taking more time doing that because you're gonna have to do it in the dry cut anyways, uh, a little bit. So, a couple inches up. Depending on the density of the hair, I can take more or less uh, as I'm working through. Matt, just so you know, if yeah. you keep moving that, this, um the overhead camera isn't as great, just so you know. Like, if you stay... Okay, that's all right, though. I'd rather Thad's was... Okay. Good. Okay. Hey, Matt. Yeah. Um, the blacksmith fit, the pixie shear? Yeah. Um, would that be turn this as... I mean, does that have a little more of a rounded tip to it rather than a pointed tip like the one you're using now? The blacksmith fit? Yeah, the pixie shear. Oh, the pixie. Yeah. Well, so the pixie and the retro are similar, so I'll just show you guys the difference. So... When you're, when you're doing detail work, and I think a lot of people have these questions with scissors, so this is the retro scissor, and this is the, um, the beak, right? So you can see that the tips aren't that different, um, so that's why I think a lot of people choose this scissor. The biggest difference that you're going to notice is the beak's blade, um, if you're working with thicker, uh, more dense hair, what's going to happen is it gets very weak. So this is a five and a half inch beak scissor, I would honestly go maybe a five inch. You know, I purchase these scissors and sometimes I think, you know what, I got, I love five and a half inches, so I get that. Um, but a lot of times I would like to go with the five inch because the blade's gonna be a little bit stronger. Once it gets to the tip of this scissor, it's a little weaker. Um, yes, Brian, the tip. So. <laughs> tip is weak. Um, mm. Hey Matt, they are saying that there's a slight echo coming when you talk. Slight echo when I talk. Yeah, but not when we talk. But they say it's only you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I said it's because you need to be heard twice. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably what it is. I think 
It's probably hearing me through this and through you guys as well. Oh. Um, Stacy asks, why do you slightly tap the hair with your scissors? Little tap? Uh, you know what? Like when you put it in the comb. Well, you're actually, so that's a good question. So when we tap it into the comb, you're just pushing it down to the bone of the comb. If you didn't do that, it would just be laying on the top and it wouldn't have the right tension. What so, part of the comb? The bone. What's wrong with you? <laughs> He's being Brian. <laughs> You've I know. just noticed this? Brian's 12. <laughs> All right, so I, I want to figure out the echo, though. Is it really bad, or is it just... No, They're no one says it's, it's that bad. They say it's, like, it's... No one's bothered by it. But okay. Your mic was up the highest, speak. so I just turned it down, too, a little bit. So okay, maybe. cool. Thank you. All right, so now I'm going to go in here. I combed the hair down. I, I'm not going to go in with any elevation yet. I am going to use a slight bit of elevation, because... When I'm cutting a one length haircut, I know that everybody obviously would be cut at one length, but because of the shelf kind of that happens with the round of the head uh, as it curves up and we take more hair down, you start to get that really big buildup of weight. So what I like to do is just soften that a little bit. So this next section, what I'm gonna do is just cut it uh, the same right along that guideline. Use that guideline. I also like to pinch the hair just to give it a little tension. Uh, as I'm combing it, but then I let it go and let it just lay the way it's supposed to. Um, and then as I get to the corner, I scoop it back, push it down into my comb, and cut. Okay. Apparently the echo is fixed. Oh, that's good. Good job, Steenie. Christina. Thanks. I'm really good at my job. Sip <laughs> says, great technical skills, Steenie. I thought he was talking to me. So sweet. Nope, it's me. Nope, it's Chris. <laughs> All right. And one of our longtime viewers, Megan Sullivan, yes, did a her first cutting class. Oh, she really? Taught it. She, uh, taught? she went back to the school she used to teach at. They asked her to come back into class. It was a men's. Like a uh, barbering type clipper class. Okay. She dealt with them uh, some clipper maintenance and tool maintenance. She even gave them our video as a reference. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So Emily you, would Megan. like to know, what if someone has a cowlick on their neck line underneath? So that's what this haircut is actually great for, is the reason I'm, I'm not using tension throughout this whole haircut and why, like, you'll see some of these little pieces of hair kind of popping out under the bottom. That's okay because really that's just hair acting in different ways um, when it doesn't have tension put to it. So what I'm trying to say is when you hold hair, you're forcing it to be somewhere, right? If you let it go, then it's allowed to be what it wants to be and how it's gonna live. So you have to be careful when you're cutting hair. If you put too much tension on the hair, then it's gonna freak out. Um, it's kind of like a teenage girl, right? So <laughs> if you, Try to control it too much, it's gonna freak out and go crazy, right? But if you gotta let it have its room, I don't even know. I'm acting like I know about teenage girls. I don't even know what that means. Is that was like, well, like a thad analogy. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm too close to thad. So, uh, so hang out but that's girls? the thing. If you do too much tension, <laughs> I was gonna say it's <laughs> too like much tension on a teenage girl and they freak out. That's kind of all right. Whatever. Um, I mean, it's like me or Justin. So, I was gonna say that you're describing how you treat Justin and Brian. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, um, I just didn't want to say. So, <laughs> don't put tension on the hair, right? Yeah, let it be. Just let us be. All right. So, all right. So we're combing it down. I'm gonna put the scissor or the comb, the hair, whatever. <laughs> Jeez. Tough Long day. Tonight, yeah. All right, and I'm cutting with the end of the scissor. Now, what kind of comb are you using right now? Um, and do you prefer that for certain types of hair, or is that like your all-purpose for like a coarser head of hair for this cut? Yeah, so this is the YS Park 339 comb. I like this one for pretty much everything. Like, I don't, I don't want to say that I use it all the time for everything I do, uh, but this is my go-to comb for sure because it's smaller. Um, it allows you to kind of get those smaller partings and tighter tension on the haircut. So most of the time it's my go-to. We're gonna get into some other combs as I work through the haircut um, and show you the dry finished part. 
but the 339 is one of my favorites for sure. All right, now we're throwing combs. To throw now we're comb. switching combs. Whatever. I'm going with that one. Just blow on it. Yeah. Yeah. My old my, a college policy just work with would uh, tell everybody, like, well, you know what? Right now, skateboard practice. Just kiss it up to God and just keep going. Right. <laughs> Jeez. It's <laughs> a good catch on that one. All right. Now, we are working at this point on the round of the head. So uh, we shifted up. Everything stayed pretty much the same. Now when I take a section, I'm going to grab a little bit of the old hair. And I'm still going to keep this at a zero degree angle, but it's not going to be quite down at that one length uh, part of the haircut. So what I'm going to do is you can see 90 degrees come straight off the head. I'm going to keep my elevation nice and low. Find your guide. So keeping that at a zero degree angle. So you can see how it just slightly tucks it under. It's not flipping out. It doesn't have that kind of weird, because it's really giving it a shape, and that's, to me, the whole point. I know that, you know, a lot of people would cut a one length, just cut it one length. I like to give it a little bit of a bevel uh, right towards the edge. So it is a slight graduation in there, but I think it's, it's fitting. Um, we can obviously all hold the hair down and cut it at one length. So I'm going to move, turn a little bit. And now, as we're working uh, towards the side, this part, we're getting to basically over top of the ear, so I don't want to um, hold that too much in my hands at that point. So I'm gonna grab half of this section, and I really think that hair cutting to me, there's gonna be a lot of movement in it. So it doesn't mean that you're always, keep that at zero, and then, so I kept that, I cut some of that at zero, and then as I'm moving over, this is a whole different feeling of the head, right? So this is 90 degrees here, and then the head shape shifts down. So 90 degrees here is straight down. So I don't want to hold the hair in my hands the entire time. Now I'm going to comb the hair as I get around that corner, and I'm going to cut it at the one length right along the head. So there's a slight bit of shifting, but it's the way that I think about hair cutting. It just works for me because as you're following the head shape, you really want to make sure that uh, you're paying attention to the angles. So we'll cut that in there, and that starts our work along the jaw line there. Do the same thing on the opposite side. So I'll cut this in half at that corner. Hold some of this in my hand here. And then comb it down. Cutting that one line. Also leaves a lot more density if you cut it right along the neck than if you elevated it at all. So now we're going to let down the rest. Top layer of this mannequin's in rough shape. <laughs> So it's pretty realistic. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. I've only bleached it four times by myself. Okay. That's all. All right, same thing here. So we have 90 degrees coming off the head. So I want to pull everything straight out and down. Here. Find your guide underneath. And that's just going to give it a nice, soft, 
you can see it'll tuck right underneath there. But this is the same concept here, because as I work over to this corner, that will drop down straight down, but this part here will come straight out. So then I'll work into the corner. Anybody have any questions? I'm just chatting them? Yeah, we're just you know, mm. sharing yeah. brownie recipes. <laughs> I got some really good ones, Christina. We'll get together and do brownies this weekend. There you go. No, everyone's just loving it. Well, that's good. We have a lot yeah. of really fantastic international viewers tonight. I love all of them. Andre is uh, translating for some of the people here who are not, like, YouTube isn't translating really? for us. So that's he is awesome. talking to... And yeah. thanks to Google, I just said hello in Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's so cool. That's as far as it goes. I don't... Oh, wait. All right, so same thing, combing it down. Oh, oh. Actually, I'm going to take a little bit of the rest of that. To me, haircutting is like, it's not you just take a panel and cut it all the same exact way. I mean, you can do that, but the head shape is shifting throughout each section. So if you grab this section of the hair, I mean, all of this is on a rounded shape. So you really have to focus on what shape you're trying to create and how you want that hair to lay uh, in the end result. So we comb it, working it through. Let me turn that, comb this hair down. I'm gonna work that line. Would the hair lay or lie? Lay or lie, I don't know. All right, now we can move into the side panel getting close to the end. What I like to do when I drop down the sides is just cut it right at the parietal ridge. Or if it makes it easier, pretty much the edge of the eyebrow, just a little bit off of that. I'm gonna section that up. That's gonna be our fringe section there. Matt, yep. how, how she deals would like to know, can this method be used on curly hair? Yes, this is the best haircut on curly hair. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what do you mean, why? No, it's, so it's the best. <laughs> it's the be no, it really is the best because it's uh, honestly, I love when, when curly hair expands. Now, it's not the best on every curly hair guest because mm -hmm. some of them don't want their curly hair to expand, mm -hmm. but those that want to kind of have that extra weight build up. I think it's a great shape when you keep it along the jawline and then when it just curls up and has all that texture, I think it looks really good. But I mean, obviously that's depending on the person that you're putting the haircut on. So you definitely want to make sure you pick the right one. But I mean, you look at this, uh, the shape on this, if this were curly and kind of expanding up, you can kind of get a little bit of curl and wave. I just think it looks great when the shape kind of opens up here and then gets sleeker towards the top. So uh, I think it's a pretty cool haircut for curly hair. Isn't that kind of the Christmas tree thing that the curly head people don't like though? Yeah, but it's not Christmas tree like. I mean, it's a specific mm -hmm. haircut. Like, yeah. yeah, like. You wouldn't do this on everyone, but it could work. So that's good. To if know. that's the look not you were going for. Yeah, head. don't do this on longer <laughs> curly hair or somebody that doesn't want it to expand out. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, I have a guest whose hair is absolutely perfect for this cut, but she doesn't like that expanded look, so... I know, I hate that. I know. I keep trying to convince her that it's okay, but she's not having it. Okay. All right, because the density is so low in, in our mannequin here, our mannequin friend, probably because I've combed and half of it's fallen out, uh, these are not the mannequins that we have on our store. Um what I get. Uh, now, I'm going to comb the hair down, little tension, using the wide teeth of the comb in that area, and I'm just going to work that line right where I want it. 
and that's cool. And the reason you can take that entire section and hold it out there uh, just straight down is because this part of the head is basically flat. So it's all laying down, it's all gonna be cut in the same plane. Uh, so you're good to go there. Same thing on this side, comb it down. I like to get the shape kind of worked in with the wet hair so I know where that length is gonna sit. And then I cut across my angle. There. Now we'll let down the top. Final steps here. And I'm going to part it in the center to start. Now this would be definitely one of your guests that either doesn't want to part or is more of a center part in this haircut. Uh, you can see this one, uh, we put the fringe on so it, there really isn't a part, um, so that works out. If they were gonna do a side parting, you would definitely wanna make that side parting now, uh, at this point, rather than later. Now the fringe to me is really important. Obviously, uh, this is what they're gonna look at all the time. So, uh, there is a lot more detail that goes into cutting the fringe than just combing the hair, holding it out, and cutting it at a certain length. Uh, so I'm gonna take little sections. I'll show you exactly what that section looks like or that parting looks like. Out of the front here. So depending on what you want the fringe to, or bangs to look like. If you want them really thick and heavy, you can hold them straight down. The problem is a lot of people have little cowlicks and different things that happen in the front. So if you were to just hold it down and cut it, you're going to have hair kind of popping everywhere. And you're going to see that thing that we never want to see, which is that hair kind of sliding underneath and sticking out of the fringe area. So what I like to do We've got, again, our 90 degrees here, straight off the fringe or the bangs. Straight off the fringe. And uh, <laughs> so what I'm going to do is just go one step lower than 90. So if you see here. 89. Yep. It's amazing, Brian. <laughs> Every day. I'm getting better. You amaze me more. I know. I'm, I'm getting pretty good so at this. So 90 to 89. And that's where we're going to cut it. Uh, Can we get a protractor on this piece? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to go a little shorter. So, a little bit shorter. Oh, out the I know. She just did that deep breath. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe you just did that. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to do that. Okay, so... <laughs> Cutting straight across, and that starts our guideline, right? So uh, you don't want to go too far. Uh, this is what Christina did to her niece back in the day. If you go too far Ouch. to the edge, how's it feel under that bus? You'll cut, <laughs> you'll cut those sideburns right in there. Um, so you taught me everything I know, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> So now I'm combing the hair and I want to see how it's really going to fall. So, Wait, is it too late for me to ask a question on this fringe? No. Because I know there are lots of people that will be totally down with this straight across, but what about the people, especially on this kind of haircut, that want that little bit of arch? Like where it's across through the middle but then kind of curves down into the those. rest of the bob. Oh, yeah, the rounded you ones. You do? Yeah. I'm a fan as well. That's what I do. I just feel like that I get that a little bit more than I get completely like straight, straight across, across yeah. all the way. Yeah. I mean, even if you don't want to cut it that way, can you just go over how you would? No, we can make a shift in it. So here's so here's the thing. If just you want to have one side. a lot of people <laughs> like to have that kind of, you know, that opened up. I can cut that off after. So that opened up kind of V shape that's soft. It doesn't go blunt to the edge. They're like, like, like a U. Fringy, yeah. shaggy 80s bang. So you grab the um, center, right? That'll become your guideline. I have to go back and watch this because I can't see you. <laughs> 
Matt, can you just turn and face us for right. this moment? <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll give you a play by play, everyone else. So again, uh, so I'm going off that guide. I have now I've cut my my center guide there. And really what I'm gonna do from that point, because when you bring something down horizontally, you're actually cutting it the same way you could cut it vertically, if that makes sense. So what I'm gonna do is show you that if you cut it vertically and you wanted this same exact fringe, get this hair. You wanted that same exact fringe. All you'd have to do is elevate the hair vertically. Thank you. And cut it <laughs> just like this, right? So you could go in and cut that line. Can you see, Thad? Okay. So now what I'm going to do, because I want to extend it and bring it over, all I'm going to do is make that my stationary guide and work vertical sections and go right to the center. So using over direction to push weight, just like that, same angle, same angle, stationary mm. guide. I like it. Didn't Taylor Swift yeah. have like these bangs? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so you're gonna Matt, see we got how. Oh wait. I'll show you. No, no, no. You're fine. So you can see how it kind of angles around. The eye. Everyone's gonna That's go delicious. Bangs. That's, That's beautiful. Delicious. That's perfect. Just so you know, um, we're getting a request for you to do the swords and fire haircutting. Yeah, that's next week. Can I do that one? <laughs> that will be. Joking. I was gonna say, there's also a request for an entire show just on fringe. That can we trim your beard well, with fire and swords? Oh my god, we should all just do fringe on each other. Yeah, <laughs> a I whole have, episode of fringe in different ways. We all have different lengths. I have bangs. Oh my god, can we do a side fringe on Thad's beard? <laughs> yes. Yes. He'll look like a semicolon. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so as you can see, that pushes the fringe around. Ooh. It got a little bit longer. I want some fringe. Yep, give me. That's sexy. Quit rushing the man, Thad. <laughs> Thad, you're always so demanding. Wait, if we do that on you're your beard, a, Thad, it'll be like reverse the devil girls horns. Now. Thad, let's do this on right. your beard and you'll have like horns. So now all I'm going to do is for the rest of the haircut, come in here, slightly tilt the head, combing everything down, and I'm going to work the same line following the guide. You don't need to use fire because those bangs are fire. Hot like fire. <laughs> Almost like Dylon cutting. All right. There's that. Same thing on this side. What's wrong with you guys? It's very late. Lack of food. You picked us you out. You just ate. No, not me. Oh, Brian. Dad's trying Brea. to call me out. We did not pick you guys out. We accepted you, though. <laughs> no, you, you literally right. picked me out. No, it's because now this is all we have to do is sit and give commentary. Yeah. <laughs> We're like the two guys Peanut on the Muppets. <laughs> all right, so. Ooh, I like the fringe. I want some fringe, Matt. You want some fringe? fringe. Do it right now. Come over. No. I so, gotta, I gotta work the camera. Here is. She's cute. Let's name her Taylor. She's delicious. Here's Taylor. Just call her Tay. Yeah, so. No. Tay's on deck. Does anybody have any questions about this? Questions, comments? Uh, just can you do a video on long layers? Obviously not on this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about it. We will do, we're going to do a lot of different videos. So I think this is a cool format. We're going to have different people. People are liking it. Yeah, week. what are people saying people, about it? Sorry, cool. I don't mean to cut you off. Yeah, are we getting good feedback? Yeah, people, people are, are loving really it. People are really liking the idea of fire. Yeah. Oh. Uh, well, Anil, we uh, Hairdressers out, are crazy people. We found out uh, the mm. translation. She sounds like she's from Brazil. And she says we are very professional and organized and congrats okay. us for the show. Excellent. Mm. Excellent. In Brazilian, yeah. though. So Portuguese. That's all In Portuguese. Her, that's all her. <laughs> no, I... No. <laughs> I yeah. All right, cool. So we need to choose someone to... Well, first off, I'm going to show you how I finished it. Um, oh, yeah. Because there's a lot of detail work that... And here we go. And magic. That's actually really so good. So this does have a lot of texture spray in it. What's that? Someone's asking because they can see this textured Anna Wintour. How would you go about the blowout to give a really sleek look to this haircut? I know you're not gonna yeah. blow it out, but how? Like, would you? 
So the way that I would go about this sleek feel, I would flat wrap everything around, which I did. I actually... It so, was super slick when you first did it. Yeah. So hang on, Thaddeus. Calm yourself. That's all over the place. I know. You obviously didn't eat enough food. I know. So here's the deal. So when we want... If you want to... Um, create a sleek look on this. I went through and I flat wrapped and blew dry the whole thing, smoothed it with an iron. It's hard to tell that that's what happened, but that's what I, so I went through, smoothed it with an iron, and then I went through the entire perimeter using the tip of the scissor. Um, I think the key to just, to creating the hair, making it smooth for cutting is just following the shape of the head. And we're, we'll do a class on that as well. There's not a lot of dry cutting involved in this haircut. That's why I wasn't that worried about it. But I did go through um, and work the edge of the haircut. So I'm going to show you guys how I did that. Um, so as we comb this down, just using the tip of the scissor. And this is why I'm going to show you guys why you can't just use a scissor like the beak to do everything. Because if you look at the tip, like we talked about. <laughs> um, so not the whole scissor? Not the whole scissor, just the tip. All right. We, um, Tell Matt likes it. So if you look at, this is the type Z2 scissor that I talk about all the time from Mizutani that I love, that you can get on Shop FSE for sure. Um, now, look at the difference in the blade. So, <laughs> I'll kill you, Brian. Um, <laughs> Why is it just me? That's Christina's... on tape. She does this to me all the time. She's the one making me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the deal. So skinny, skinny blade, fatter blade. As the Z2, it has a lot of power because it gets fatter here towards the end and yes so this is going to be weak so if you tried to go in and cut the hair like this and try it i'm all of you <laughs> i'm the only one behaving myself right now how weird is that our friend from brazil does not think this is professional anymore so anyways guys you have to have a more powerful scissor to do your detail work i like the type c2 because it gets fatter towards the end so that allows me too to go in and just do that detail work all the way around the edge. So any of those hairs that we saw, the calyx, everything that uh, your guests might have, any challenges they might have, you can remove all of that at the end. And then you just have a nice sleek shape. We went in with a good old bracado back to the beach. Back to the beach. After I had smoothed it out, I sprayed this in and that was it. It kind of made, it gave it that texture the movement, and that kind of feel. So. Spray it in your face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Matt, real quick. One of our uh, viewers, their uh, flat iron broke, and they're questioning whether she got one to try to fix it. What flat iron is your favorite for something like this, pretty versatile to use on let's say, long hair, short hair? So, I, I mean, I've obviously, um, we've been working with uh, Vibra Straight. So, I, do I have that gift thing? Oh, my God, I can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> I can't breathe. Um, where's that gift bag? Where's that box that you had the other day? The box of giveaways. The box of giveaways. Because maybe we should give it away. Whoa. Well, if they land on that Where are they from? Uh, let's find out. No, I don't think so. Maybe it's downstairs. It's from the chair. Okay. I also want to say thank you to our friends at Minerva uh, while we find this gift basket because they did send us that. Do you want to grab that thing real quick? Um, cause they did send us a gift just like Millennium did last week. We keep getting more gifts and cookies, oh. which I should have given that to you guys at the mm. beginning. Um, we, we but, more cookies? Four? What? Yeah. So Minerva, I'll pull it out. Minervabeauty.com sent us this delicious. Oh, here. Why would you say No, now? Dre, you get to spin the wheel. We get to open the presents. Yeah. There you go, Tab. You don't so, get everything. Thank you to Minervabeauty.com. For this wonderful gift basket of chocolates. Yeah, I'll open that here. I got the knife ready. That's right coming now. home. And here you go. Give me. Hey, Brian. Don't give it to him. What's hilarious is the gift tree sent us some really fun <laughs> scissors. So I said to everybody that works here that these are what they're getting in their Christmas gift. Uh, no Mizutani scissors this year. Hey, Matt. Yeah. She is from Mexico. Who is? Viri, the one whose flat iron broke. How much would it cost to send that to Mexico? I don't know. Let's find I out. Can we uh can we send this to Mexico? I don't see why not. I love our I love our friends from all over the world. 
You want to? Are we? I can find out how. Where is she, where is she from? Can you? So uh, let's do it this way. What what town is she from? Yeah. Here? So send us email Christina your address at so Christina C H R I S T I N A at at freesaloneducation.com. Email Christina and I will we will send this. Christina will send this to Mexico for you. But here's the deal. So Vibra Straight Iron. This is a really cool kit. Is this the one? Yeah, the iron. That might be products. There's salon products in here. Aha, good. And I dig this iron. It's, you know, it's a little bit fatter. You can see. <laughs> you can get this iron on uh, supersilk.us as well. Um, I don't, we don't sell this one, uh, but they have it. I think it's like, it's pretty cheap. It doesn't cost a lot and it works really well. Uh, it also vibrates as it straightens. So it helps move the hair around. So it glides over the hair better. Um, than your normal iron. That's why they call it the Vibra Straight. But I like using this thing, so definitely check it out. Good quality, and I dig the logo it's on it. It's not a cheap it's cool. iron. It's, no, no, no. It's, it's cheap and expensive. It's an affordable iron. It's an affordable. Iron. Yes. Yeah. That was like just day so one of, you just of like talking about products. Yeah. yeah. Don't it's say fat cheap. And it vibrates. Matt loves that. Yeah. yeah What's wrong with right. you? You said it. <laughs> I'm just cliffs noting you. All right. So, got that. <laughs> All right, we need to spin the wheel. Now that you guys have eaten Look lots of chocolate, vultures. I didn't even. Get I know. Any. Not even offering, just picking First out what you love. Christina, you want one? <laughs> yeah, so on, throw them into that, huh? on the wheel, we have uh, MinervaBeauty.com, who sent Nuts. us the great gift also basket, healthy. who sent us these chairs and these stations. So if you guys are looking Gotta to hook your salon Nuts. up, you could win a prize from them. We also have Mainstream. Mainstream just told me today that a lot of our users started using their app. And they're psyched about it, so that's cool. All over the world, actually. M A N E. So check out M A N E S C R E E M. Yes. Uh, if you want to do hair services uh, like an Uber driver. Uh, Donald Scott, we got some new carving combs. Psyched if you want some, set, we'll send them to you. Uh, Sunlight's Balayage is a Bali box. J Lace, hook you up with some hairdresser clothing. We have, what else do we have, guys? Olaplex. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, stylus kit. Need um, say more. Par Parker. Everyone knows about Olaplex. Yeah, we love Olaplex. Um, Parker razors, straight razors. Ergo brushes, which very exciting news coming soon from Ergo brushes. Should we say it? Yes. No. Wait. We're not saying it. No, don't say it. You gotta it. wait. And, Pleasure delays. Uh, FSE is giving away. What? We're giving away Thad's beard. I know. Uh, yeah, we're giving away Thad's we're beard. We're giving away pieces of Thad's beard. <laughs> and then uh, Mizutani scissors. We still have to give away that pair of Mizutani scissors. So if it lands on that, you're in luck. What's the pair? Who's spinning the wheel today? Drea. No, but who wants to spin how the wheel? We pick, how should we pick? How do Some, you want to pick it? Somebody watching live who wants to spin, let us know right now. Can they call? There's a lot. They can't call. Oh. Who's going to be the first? Come on, Matt. I don't have the call hooked up yet. Okay. Hey guys, I uh, I'm not the person to ask this, but they directed it to me. Who or what's a great curling wand that you guys prefer? I am not the curling wand guy. What Clearly. curling wand do we? What do you guys like? I like the Amica five-piece iron set. Mm. So do I. They're different. Yeah, they're different sizes, and you can control the heat. Because my favorite one you can't get ever. <laughs> we do. Yeah. I love the original Paul Mitchell clipless, but it was limited edition, and they the never... The red one? The red yeah. one. The first red one, not yeah. the XL red Whoa. one. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. She just got real. I do like the Neuro, too, though. Yeah. I can't. Just because I like the options. Oh, wait. Did we pick who's spinning yet? Because everybody's freaking out. Yeah, we who's... need to pick someone. Who's okay. picking? Come on. Um, let me see. The first person who said it was... The first person was Zoe. Oh, no. The first person was Stacy. No. Yeah, <laughs> Stacy Hammond said. Zoe's so upset right now. Yep. All right, who are we spinning for? Stacy Hammond. Stacy Hammond. Let me make sure she's in. Thad, can you get it up there? Zoom it in. Quick, Thad. Get it close, Thad. All up in there. Drea. What's it going to be? She's got some power. Wow, Drea. <laughs> I worked out last week. Wait, is it really FSE? <laughs> Oh my yeah. gosh, Amika. Nice. So okay. maybe if you're All lucky, right. you'll get Two the five-piece iron set. Two weeks in a row. Amika is going to love us. <laughs> or not. 
I think they just love giving stuff to yeah. people. So yeah, they awesome. love it. Yeah, <laughs> they love it. We love That's it. Why they keep choosing it? Yeah. All right. I love their products. Seriously. I love these cookies. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Amika tools Ooh, are. What have you are got, awesome, Justin? So. Huh? All right. She's <laughs> about to throw her computer down for a cookie. No. <laughs> All right. What else do we have? Anything? Um. We no. will we will be coming out with a schedule of the classes. Um, so follow us on Instagram at Free Salon Education. Uh, we will post what we're doing on the class prior to the class, uh, either a pre-done mannequin or model or whatever. Um, and then the that's it. Follow all these guys. They're Hairstyle, just, music. Yeah, just music. Hairstyle, H A R. Really. <laughs> H A R E. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yes, I'm kidding. H A I R E. I know. <laughs> uh, Viria says thank you guys so much. By the way, she's. Uh, out. You're welcome. Very cool. Dre eight yeah. two two eight nine nine close whatever. <laughs> Justin. I am Justin Scott. Thad. At Thad Bolonized. Christina. Underscore Steeny. S T I N I. Yeah, so follow us on everything uh, Free Salon Education. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked episode one. You definitely have to comment and let us know. What are we doing for episode like two? We don't know yet. We're figuring that out. Episode two next is two, coming up. Next Wednesday. Let us know. Um, keep, so, keep us posted uh, what you want to see. Yeah, post in the comments yeah. what yeah. you want to see. And, uh, and oh, wait. we'll go there. Oh, wait, real quick. When, yeah. uh, our winner, give the email address to who? Oh, yeah, contest. Contest at freesaloneducation.com. Uh, send your address, and that's it. Name and address, and uh, we'll phone send it to Amika. Just in case. Yeah. And phone number? Yeah, and phone just number. whatever. Yeah, just and case. your blood type. Yeah. Star sign. And your social security number. Yeah. <laughs> and your mother's maiden name. Yeah. Do you and like long walks on the beach? Back your credit card. The three. Yeah. I, I, Justin! <laughs> <laughs> I win. Twice today. <laughs> I need to get out of here. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week right here. Model wave.